This is question number five on part B of short answer questions. Josie is a student on a graphics design course at Swindon College. As part of her course, she has to manipulate and edit high resolution images. Josie uses a range of devices to complete her assignments. Josie needs to choose between lossy uh, or lossless compression to submit. Oh, what's happening? To submit photographs to her tutor. Explain two factors that Josie should consider when choosing a file compression type. Now, again, lossy is where some of the information is removed permanently. So we can never get that information back. That's lossy. Lossless is where the information is not removed. It is simply rearranged so that we can always go back to the original. And the rearrangement, let me just quickly show you what the rearrangement might look like. So just imagine that this, these are the bits that make up, um, I don't know, an image file. We have 111000 all the way along, right? And then we might have, let's say, 111 here. Rather than all of this being displayed at once, what, what might happen? Let me just say equal here. Let's just say for this line, I'm not going to count how many ones there are, but let's just assume it's like, let's say 30. So we could have 30 and we could have ones, right? And this would tell us that we have 30 of this thing. And then for the other one, we could have uh, 15... Uh, what's that? Zero? 15 zeros. And then after that, we could have 15 uh, ones. This is the rearrangement. So this has gone from 30 characters long down to one to, let's just say five for this one. This has gone from 30 characters long down to six, I think. So that's, uh, what's that? 30 and five. That's five to six times smaller on average for that one. And then so on for this one as well. So rather than having now an image file or Word document, a PDF is going to be much, much longer. So let's just say we have one million ones. Rather than writing one million ones out, we could do something along the lines of uh, 10 to the power, where's to the power, to the power of six. And then we could just have ones. Now that cuts down my thing from one million characters down to however many that may, um, that is, right? So this is how loss less can work. You're simply rearranging the data in a more efficient way. All right, so now let's jump into this question. Let me remove this. Josie's tutor would need to view photographs in their original quality in order to assess the work. Lossy format may affect the quality of the image and may therefore affect her work. Loss less format would have no impact on the image quality. So in as much as we didn't define what lossy and losses are, we linked it directly to this question. Again, again, and again, lossy is where some of the data is removed permanently. Lossless, the data is simply rearranged, but everything is kept and you can always go back to the original data. Next one, it says, Josie may need to reduce the photograph stroke image file size to transfer them to the tutor by email. And therefore, a lossy format would, would result in a smaller file size uh, than a lossless format. Quite simply, most email clients, so let's think of Outlook, uh, what's the other one? Google, Google Gmail, sorry, iCloud Mail, I think it's called. All of them typically have a restriction on how much or how big those files can be that you're sending in an email. I think for Google Drive is 25 megabytes, for OneDrive is probably 50 megabytes. So if you're working on an image, a single high quality image for a graphics design course might be hundreds of megabytes for a single, single file, um, right? Or for a couple of files, let's say. So for her to send that via email, she would most likely have to choose lossy because that's going to get rid of some of the information. It's going to make it significantly smaller than lossless would when compressed.